Hi everyone, Fridhivya from TGT and welcome to another video. A few weeks ago, Apple released macOS Monterey 12.0.1 to the public along with iOS 15.1. There are already a ton of videos about the new features of macOS Monterey. Well, in this video, I am going to share how the latest macOS is running on the older Macs, the performance, battery life and issues as well. If you watch my macOS update videos, you already know that I use this Mi 2017 MacBook Air 13 inch as my daily driver even today. macOS Big Sur runs perfectly fine in this MacBook Air. macOS Monterey brought some new features for this Mac and some issues as well. This update came in around 12.13 GB on this MacBook Air. Now clicking the more info option will take you to the new feature page. We will discuss everything in a moment. Along with that, Apple also released a new update for macOS Big Sur. So if you do not want to update and want to stay on macOS Big Sur, you can do that as well. Apple will keep providing important security updates over time, but don't expect any new features for Big Sur. Before the update, let's check the storage. As you can see, we have 76.72 GB available out of 128 GB. For the latest Apple related news like this, please make sure you subscribe to TGT. I keep making such useful videos for you guys frequently to keep you updated. This update took around one and a half hours to install. After the update, let's check the new build number. As you can see, it is 21A559. Now let's check the storage. We have around 76.3 GB left now. So pretty minor storage space change. Now let's discuss about the major new features we get on this Mac. First, if you go to the system preference and then desktop and screen servers, you have some new wallpapers here. Some are Monterey special and some are new Mac special wallpapers as well. If you check the screen server option, you get the new Monterey and Hello screen server as well. If you go to finder, then select any file and folder and then press the option key at the bottom, you can now see the complete path of the file and folder. So that's a new detailing that you get with this update. Also while on finder, if you see the option go to or connect to server, it now looks a bit different as well. Now you have shortcuts on Mac as well. It now syncs seamlessly with your iPhone, iPad and other Macs. You can create any new shortcuts here and use them on your iPhone, iPad as well. Within shortcuts, you have quick actions, then menu bar. You can add any shortcut and that will appear on the menu bar just like this I have here. Then we have the gallery. Here you have shortcuts for Mac OS then play fun games with Siri which Apple introduced with iOS 15.1 update as well. You have many different options also and these are exactly the same you get on your iPhone. Next let's slide in the notifications. Here the notifications look a bit different. You have notifications grouping just like iOS 15. Right clicking any notification will give you options to mute or turn off the notification from here or you can go to the notification preferences and change it from there as well. Within the messages, Apple has introduced the same shared with you and stack image feature that you get with iOS 15. You can slide over the stack images with ease from here or you can click here and see all the images in a gallery view. You'll get a new splash screen when you open the messages app for the first time after installing, mentioning about the new features. Also, you can add and edit the new Memoji stickers here just like iOS and send it over messages. Now let's go ahead and open FaceTime. Within the FaceTime app during a call, here I am calling myself, you now have an option to share link and allow other people to join you even from Windows and Android platforms. Also, you can silence join request if you want by clicking here. Within the control center, you now have keyboard brightness option, screen mirroring option. Also, you can set focus preferences from here as well. Then you have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and airdrop access as well. So it's just a bit different from macOS Big Sur. Within photos app, now you have the same live text option that you get on iOS 15. You can copy any text from any photo and paste it anywhere you want. 
Also, if you click on the info icon, you can now get more details about the photo as well. In macOS Monterey, Apple has completely redesigned the Safari browser. If you open Safari, you can see the address bar looks a bit different. Let's open more tabs and this is how it looks now. Also, you have shared with you options just like iOS 15. You can turn on and off settings from here. I have made a separate video in more details about Safari 15.1 which is the current version. Do watch it after this one to know more about what's new in Safari. It's there in the end screen. The maps has been updated as well. Once you open the map, you now have updated map styles and improved design makes it easier to navigate and explore the maps. Completely redesigned place cards make it easier to learn about and interact with places and you have improved searchability as well. Finding places is now easier with filters and automatic updates when you are browsing results on the map. When you open the app store for the first time after the install, you get this new flash screen which says welcome to the app store, discover amazing apps that help unlock the full potential of your Mac and get access to a growing collection of incredibly fun games on Apple Arcade as well. There are new features in the notes app as well. You now have organized with tags where you can hashtag any word from the notes. And of course you have the create quick notes from anywhere option. So if you take your cursor at the bottom right corner and click, you now have access to quick notes. You can take a quick note and then save it on the original notes. Also you can attach media, lock, share the quick note and send a copy via airdrop and more. Just like the iOS and iPadOS, we have the system-wide translation available here as well. If you go to any page and select any word, right-click on it, now you have the option to translate it. The podcast app has been updated. You have the built-in shared with you feature available here as well. The sidebar layout is a bit newer. Overall, Apple is trying to make all the common apps much more consistent across macOS, iOS and iPadOS. Within passwords, now we have the two-factor authentication built right within the password manager. If you go to any password and then click edit, here we now have an option to enter setup key. So you can add a second layer of authentication right within the macOS. No need to use any third-party apps anymore. So that's a very good addition for macOS. Within voice memo, you can create recordings on your iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch or Mac and iCloud will sync them across all your devices. You now can control the speed of the playback that is speed up or slow down playback of a voice memo's recording and you can automatically skip over any gaps in your recording with a single click. So these are the new features that are available with voice memo. Well, mostly these are the major new features that are available with the Intel based MacBook Air. There are a lot of small changes here and there and in the UI as well. Now let's move over to the performance. At this point, this MacBook Air is almost 4 years old. So definitely it will show up its age. But overall, according to the fluidity in UI, even after the update, this is absolutely fine. It is running as fast as it was on macOS Big Sur. About battery life, with macOS Big Sur, I used to get around 6 to 6.5 six hours of battery life. Now here, I use this third-party battery widget. This is called Battery Monitor. You can see the battery health is around 85% and this MacBook Air has gone through 495 battery cycles, which is quite a lot. Now here, you can see the present battery level is 61%. And if I continue to perform the same tasks, this Mac will last another 4 hours and 19 minutes, which is quite good. Here I should mention one thing, I think I am getting better battery life on this Intel based MacBook Air after this update, at least 30 to 40 minutes more. Now here are the issues that I am facing. One thing that doesn't work properly after this update is unlock your Mac with Apple Watch. No matter what solution I try. It just doesn't work 9 out of 10 times after this update. I don't know if the issue is with macOS Monterey or watchOS 8.1, but it fails most of the times. It was working perfectly fine with macOS Big Sur. I'll update you later if I'm able to short out this issue. Next issue is AirDrop. 
airdrop from my iPhone 12 mini to this Mac also fails sometime after this update. When it works, it works fine, but when it fails, it just keeps on happening. Also, I think the wake up from the slip that is from the lead down position is also just a tad bit slower. I hope that improves over time. But overall, I should say this is a great update for the older Macs as well. So should you update your older Macs like this one? Well, I should say absolutely yes. Remember, this is the first public release. So definitely there will be some minor issues. Also, not all the features that Apple mentioned during the event is available yet. Some features will be rolled out over time. So far, this is a stable update with lot of new features for your Mac. So definitely update and try those out. Apple has a whole year to make this OS much more polished and seamless. Do share your views about Mac OS Monterey. Do hit the like button and share it with your friends. And please don't forget to subscribe to TGT. I will see you in my next one. Peace.